As painful as inflation is in the United States, it's even worse in the UK. The consumer price index in the country climbed at an annual rate of 10.1% in September, matching July's 40-year high for British inflation. Food prices are driving the numbers. They have jumped by more than 14% in the last year. The cost of some staples like bread and milk are climbing even faster. And new reports, news reports, I should say, should tell of people having trouble feeding their families. The crisis has landed on the doorstep of British Prime Minister Liz Truss. Opposition politicians blame her economic agenda, and even some in her own party are publicly calling for her to resign. Truss heard what the anger sounded like in Parliament Wednesday during the uniquely British custom known as Prime Minister's Question Time. I am, um, Mr. Speaker, that I am sorry and that I have made mistakes. But the right thing to do in those circumstances is to make changes, which I've made, and to get on with the job and deliver for the British people. For more on this, let's bring in Adam Posen. He's the president of the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Adam, you won't have to fight through that kind of jeering uh, to get your questions across here. But before we deal with what's happening in the UK, help me understand, it feels like in the UK, in France, in Germany, all across Europe and in the United States, they're all facing a version of the same set of challenges related to roughly the same things. Should we think about it that way, that, that they're all sort of in the same boat, seeking the same solutions to similar problems? Actually, John, I would make a distinction. Um, Europe meaning all the countries you mentioned except the UK, uh, is dealing with direct costs from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, cuts off of energy, food prices, energy prices, uncertainty. The US is dealing with a largely domestic set of problems that we let inflation go on too long. And so it's now into services and into wages in ways that keep going even as the prices of shortage goods come down. The UK has the worst of both worlds. They've got a US-like labor market where they're short of certain kinds of people and certain kinds of workers and wages are going up a lot, but not keeping up with inflation. But unlike the US, they've got to import energy and food like Europe. So the UK has worst of both worlds. Well, okay, that, that's incredibly helpful. So. On Tuesday, the UK's new finance minister, Jeremy Hunt, so he scrapped, I think, all of Prime Minister Truss's uh, tax cutting plan, and that uh, seemed to have been approved of by the market. But then he said there also needs to be budget cuts in the winter, which means, uh, on the one hand, they're facing a lot of these pressures. Uh, and yet, if there are budget cuts, that means some of the people who are facing those pressures aren't going to presumably be getting government assistance. So how do you... How do you assess the fix that they're in in the UK? Well, it's partly of their own making. As you mentioned, uh, Prime Minister Truss and the previous chancellor put forward some proposals that were not just to help people through the winter and the high energy prices, but to do enormous tax cuts. They also did these proposals and running all kinds of processes that are meant to make it easier for the British people to know what's going on. And so the markets punished them. What the new chancellor, Mr. Hunt, has gotten back is some of what's being referred to as the moron premium, that they're respecting the processes and they're not trying to spend everything. The problem is they remain, the, the Tory government remains committed to essentially no tax increases. And they're choosing to make more what's called austerity, which is cuts in government programs, which primarily serve working poor and, and people with problems. They could choose to fill the hole by raising taxes, including on carbon, including windfall taxes on companies like energy companies that got a lot of money just through the whim of the markets. Now, they've mentioned they may consider the windfall taxes, which would be good. But again, they, there are choices to be made, not just about closing the gap, but how you close it. And by ruling out tax cuts, excuse me, ruling out tax increases, they're making it worse. And so we heard a moment ago how the prime minister was received in parliament. Even if they could come up with the right policy, does she have, is there a, is there a functioning at the moment government that could put the right policy in place? 
I must admit, I studied British politics as an undergrad. I worked in Britain. I was at the Bank of England. And I never have seen anything like what's going on right now because she has so little support within her own party, it seems, um, and unable to maintain a direction of policy, although I'm glad she corrected the mistake. You would think there would be an election or you would think the government would change. And I don't fully understand why that's not happening. I mean, just literally as a constitutional matter, the way their system works. Um, there, this is pretty unprecedented for the UK, but it makes one think of places like Italy in the past, Argentina in the present, um, places where you have, or for that matter, the UK in the 1970s, where you have a political breakdown feeding off of economic problems and economic problems getting worse because of a political breakdown. Right. A vicious cycle. Adam Posen, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you.